Michael Stevens and I have written a report called An Uncertain Future, Regional Responses to Iran's Nuclear Program. And what we've done based on interviews with 40 different political, military, diplomatic elites from across the Middle East in eight different countries is to look at the view of Iran's nuclear program, the view of uh, the process of nuclear diplomacy between the P5 plus one and Iran. So we're entering into a very critical phase right now of the sort of test and verify of whether the Iranians are really serious um, about showing the world whether they have peaceful intentions or not. Our study is designed to assess um, the reactions of the neighboring states and states that feel threatened by Iran um, to this process and trying to see whereby if the Iranians show um, that they're capable of meeting the demands set out by the P5 plus one, what these other nation states, in particular Israel and Saudi Arabia, are likely to do. And if the Iranians show that they're not capable of meeting uh, the requirements set out, uh, what that could mean for the region, for stability uh, and for peace. One of the things that we were looking at was to try and link, in particular, the policy decisions of nation states in the region um, to the policy decisions both in the United States and in the European Union. And I think this is one of the critical factors um, that we need to better understand in order to better plot pathways forward uh, in dealing with the uh, Iranian nuclear program. In November 2013, Iran and the P5 plus one group of states struck the historic Geneva Agreement, an agreement that's being implemented as of late January 2014 that rolls back parts of Iran's nuclear program for six months while the two sides hammer out a final deal. This has caused uh, alarm in some places, like Israel, concern in Saudi Arabia, and tentative acceptance, if a little bit of scepticism in other parts of the region. The Gulf states are far more interesting because what we've found is that instead of lining up next to Saudi Arabia like some of them may have done, they have all accepted the deal almost immediately. Um, there have been private reservations about it, but ultimately the UAE and Bahrain, who are both quite closely aligned at times with Saudi Arabian policy, have essentially supported the international consensus. Although we've seen slight changes now between um, Dubai and Abu Dhabi, particularly with uh, Mohammed bin Rashid, uh, the ruler of Dubai, now urging for a lifting and an easing of the sanctions, which our study also uh, predicts. So we've seen, in some ways, um, the region behaving in the way that uh, we expected through the research that we conducted. And later, as our project progressed, as nuclear diplomacy advanced, as the Geneva Agreement was struck, we were very interested in seeing how these states saw their approach to this issue. Did they like the agreement? Did they dislike it? And how had their options changed? How could they uh, see themselves responding to these problems over the next six months under conditions of new diplomacy as well? President Obama has said publicly he thinks the prospects of this interim nuclear deal with Iran turning into a comprehensive one are no better than 50-50. Uh, I think based on our research, we think that there is uh, serious scepticism about this deal, but actually many of the skeptics, most of the skeptics, don't really have the means to overturn this deal or sabotage it themselves. We don't think it's particularly plausible that Israel would conduct an attack on Iranian nuclear sites while this diplomacy is ongoing. Separately, I think we can see there are enormous obstacles remaining to a comprehensive nuclear deal, uh, issues around the remaining size and scope of Iran's nuclear program, issues around uh, whether Iran's Arak nuclear reactor will stay active, and I think those questions uh, still have a lot of work left to be done on them. Both the uh, United States and the Europeans to understand how the gradual lifting of sanctions affects all of the regional countries involved and how um, they might respond um, towards an Iran which is empowered, looking to act in the region. And so it's not just at the nuclear level that these states are worrying, it's at the sub-strategic level. And I think there we've zoomed in particularly on a number of nation states who are scared about Iran's potential to increase its activities across the region. Michael Stevens and I have written a report based on our research, but we are also running uh, an e-forum. RUSI is hosting an online section where regional voices uh, are responding to our research, responding uh, to our findings, our conclusions, pushing back, sometimes criticising, but above all offering a regional perspective on these issues.